Hey guys, welcome to this video about conquering Kubernetes 30 challenges. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Bruno. I'm the product leader uh, of a really interesting um, project called TestQ, uh, which is a test um, framework for Kubernetes. My background is in uh, software development, data science, and, and DevOps as well. And on, for the past years, I've been managing uh, Kubernetes products. Um, mainly the, the biggest one is TestQ uh, that we are going to talk just a bit today. But mostly on this video, uh, we are going to go over the today's challenges in testing in Kubernetes and uh, what are the, the big advantages of adopting a more cloud native approach to testing, uh, which is um, not commonly adopted today. Like the, these processes are a bit old uh, still. And uh, by the end of the video, we are going to have just a quick look into test cube uh, to give an idea of how can you improve your, your testing in, in the cloud. So um, we can start with the, with the challenges of testing in Kubernetes. The, the, the first one we can go through and, and you can analyze is that the large majority of testing frameworks are not built with Kubernetes in mind. Uh, what does that mean is that each testing tool, like and for example, we, we can give an example of, of these ones, are, they are made to solve particular issues with testing, like for a certain use case. In the case of Key6, it's really uh, built to solve load testing, so I press like uh, UI or end-to-end -end and Postman API. These tools uh, do a job and do it very well, which is you know, do their own type of testing. Uh, Postman is really good at API testing, but the common pattern we see here is that they are not built exactly with Kubernetes uh, in mind. Uh, so uh, so when, when after you create the tests, you have a big issue on, on making uh, the transition into, okay, this is, I wrote the test, now I need to run them. And that part of running an orchestration uh, gets more difficult because you know, the tools are not meant for that. Uh, so, and what happens is, is that um, when you try to automate and make these tests as part of your development life cycle, when you, are, you build your code, you, you want to test it, and then you want to release it to your customers. Um, when you see and we think about automation is you think of CICDs, right? Uh, and they can really uh, increase in complexity the more tests you add and the, the different test workflows you, you have there. And it can become a point where it's, it's very difficult to manage. You can have uh, many people just to manage the automation of tests. Um, so uh, so it, it, uh, you become less willing to try new tools, to change your workflows, to, to expand a bit and that can really become a blocker and also uh, impact your, your quality because e when companies don't feel uh, like very willing to, to implement these workflows because the, the cost of implementing them and maintaining them, uh, it's high compared with the perceived value, especially from business, um, then people won't do it. And, and that's you no, know, the quality of the software is going to be uh, poor. And uh, uh, the, the another issue is that then the tests get hard to debug. So imagine in a cloud environment where you have multiple environments with multiple tests and many different microservices, right? Then a test fails. And then you want to know like what happened, which environment, uh, what are the logs, what might be the issue. Um, gets very hard to track uh, as, as your project goes more in complexity. If you have just, you know, just one application, simple application running on a container, uh, might be fine, but if you have Kubernetes clusters and or multiple ones, especially and many microservices, that's definitely uh, an issue. And uh, the other thing is, uh, your environments usually are not accessible like everywhere, right? You have uh, sensitive information that you don't want to share uh, either public or even with all of your organization. Maybe just a team you don't you don't want to. Uh, to give access to everyone, uh, that environment uh, can it be? It can be for the data um, issues, or you just don't want everybody to mess up this, the the system, right? So you just give people some people uh, access to that environment, so that you know you don't have anybody that might not uh, um, know how to use it properly. Break it, right? So you, you sometimes just restrict the access and you just uh, do it on that side and. Uh, um, one another thing is like those environments are not easy to set up, right? And especially because they need um, 
different nodes, different configurations. Um, so it's, it's not that your testers can do this. Usually, like, it needs a people that um, make their job creating clusters and environments and set up the environments. Um, so it's not a straightforward. Uh, so let, let's go into what are the three pillars of cloud native testing and what they mean. Um, so there are certain advantages of, of having a, a, go, a good mindset when you start implementing testing on the cloud. You can use the old days of, of you know, having a pipe, everything on the pipeline, creating custom scripts and, and do everything uh, from there. Uh, and sometimes you, you might um, think um, of testing as an afterthought, like something that you can do just a bit, just to make sure that you know your test, um, your, your code is tested just uh, you know as a sanity check, uh, and uh, you don't care much about you know what goes to production. Uh, of course, that has implications. Uh, and uh, if you implement testing from the ground up in a good way, and you have a good methodology and processes, you are going to find that uh, you gain time. So the the earlier you implement a good testing process, um, the the more time you save uh, along the road. Of course, you should not go crazy with it. Otherwise, um, you know you might spend more time on thinking about testing than actually be the, building your product to your customers. So that's why uh, the cloud native uh, approach is good because uh, it's supposed to be scalable. It, it, you are supposed to have an easier time integrating it with your testing tools. So your testing tools should be something that works seamlessly on the cloud. You should not spend a lot of time just making your tests uh, work in a cloud environment. Uh, and of course, they should run fast. Uh, it should uh, be fast to create them and integrate them into your uh, uh, development uh, workflow. The, the second um, pillar, let's say, of, of uh, cloud native testing, uh, it's orchestration. So one thing is just you know, executing the, the tests right, in a scalable, easy way. The other one is the, the complexity of your workflows, right? So the, having one test uh, is one thing. Having, let's say, uh, a test that needs to execute before uh, 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 several different tests, let's say you might do load testing, then uh, API testing at the same time, and then you do UI testing, and you can have like different workflows and different tests running uh, at the same time. Uh, having these like advanced test orchestration, it's uh, super important to, to to have it figured out on your uh, cloud environment, right? So it should be quick. You shouldn't spend a lot of time here. The the more time you need to spend in testing, uh, is less time that you spend, you know. Uh, developing a, a better application. Uh, of course, you just want the results of having good testing, uh, but the time you spend there, um, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't take a, long, a lot of time here. Um, and should be flexible. Um, you should not, you shouldn't see big blockers and obstacles uh, in trying new tools. Uh, one thing that uh, we observe in the trends, the companies that uh, talk with us at TestCube is that they have some tools that they use to, to test their code. Uh, but the notion of having another testing tool means that uh, their testers need to be uh, to, to know how to use it. Their uh, automation engineers and DevOps people need to know how to automate it and not to integrate it on the pipelines. So it's not as easy decision, right? Um, when you take a cognitive approach and, and everything is containerized, um, that won't be an issue where you can adopt new testing types, new testing tools, and, and do workflows in a way that is not costly for your company. Uh, and, and regardless of testing type, things work like, you know, similar, uh, almost the same thing. Um, and uh, you, the thing you need to see is that uh, all of these tests and all of these process should speed up your deploy deployment process. Um, you, you shouldn't add testing steps to your pipeline and then realize that you deliver uh, less times and your development life cycles increase. So instead of, of uh, delivering, let's say, every week, because you are so focused on, on having to test these things that then you release less stuff to your customers. You should test more, yes, but without uh, uh, ex uh, making your uh, life cycles or release cycles longer. Um, it's possible to have both. So th th that's something that you can um, take into account. The And the last one, um, last but not the least, is observability. So 
you have these complex workflows with many tools and different environments, different microservices, and it runs in the cloud, right? So you need to give a really good access to everybody on the team to see what's the status of the test, what's the status of the, the applications, the environments, everything you know, uh, running well, is anything broken? Um, it should be easy to, to debug what happens. So if a test fails, uh, you sh it, it, uh, having access to the logs, having access to the pods, like what, see what, what happened there, um, it's, it's very important. Uh, and also on top of that, uh, not only for the development environments, but, but for production itself, you should have observability on how your production environments are actually running. So you should have also some tests there. Of course, they are not the same ones that you you do uh, when you uh, run them uh, on um, staging or development clusters, uh, but you should have some there, uh, definitely encouraged. And, and analytics as well. So especially if you have testing teams that have been, in, uh, been creating tests for your product like for several months, uh, you, you arrive into a, a time in place where you want to analyze basically the the performance, like is your test making your uh, development lifecycle longer? Like as I said before, uh, can we improve our test somehow? Which tests are flaky or not flaky? Like you can definitely uh, analyze how, how you are doing testing and their performance. So that's all, also something that um, is very important because it's not just about running the test. You want to know exactly how they are running and the time they take and et cetera. So, um, so with these uh, characteristics in mind and these challenges that we uh, spoke about, um, that's why we created Test Cube was to, show, to solve basically testing in the cloud and to be the, the Kubernetes native test orchestration and discussion framework, so that um, developers and testers are not blocked um, with, with testing and they can test seamlessly on, on the cloud. Uh, so, if you are a DevOps person that just wants to automate your system. Um, and give your everybody in your company access to creating tests, running them in Kubernetes, and have visibility on it. Uh, this definitely like something that you, you can um, take a look. So uh, yeah, we are a CNCF Silver member. Uh, we have more than thirty thousand downloads, and uh, now each week more and more. Um, so um, yeah, if you want to give it a try, so let me explain a bit uh, how this concept of uh, you no know, cloud native tests uh, work especially on um, if you have an automated system, like you run your test from a CI/CD, the traditional method is that you build um, and you have different steps even before you deploy, right? You can do lint, you can do code analysis. So at some point you are going to, you want to deploy to an environment, to a cloud environment where you can run tests there. Uh, so, and what you do is after you deploy uh, on the traditional way, you run several steps where you have scripts that kind of orchestrate the prepare the data for the environments, prepare the environments. They do a lot of stuff, run the test. And then of course, you know, if the test pass or fail, the pipeline will fail too. And, uh, but everything, all the complexity is implemented on the pipeline. And then the cluster is just, you know, uh, just have the application. And then all the complexity lives in the uh, pipeline, which is very, will be hard to change with time. Um, so the, the cloud native approach is that your tests uh, become uh, kind of part of the cluster. So you, you run it kind of in a GitOps manner. So it, it comes from your, uh, the states of your tests come from your uh, repository and your cluster and your pipeline just says, just decides if you, they want to run the test or not. And they are not in, uh, they are not in charge of, you know, having all the complexity there on the pipeline. Uh, in the case of test cube, you will store the test in the cluster. Uh, the tests are stored as a, um, a Kubernetes CRD. Um, and then from your pipeline, for example, you can just trigger the test. So basically your pipeline talks with test cube and test cube runs everything for you. Uh, and because test cube runs inside the, the cluster, you, you can, um, it can run in a more secure way because you don't have to expose your applications. Uh, you, you leverage test uh, Kubernetes to scale everything because everything runs as a Kubernetes job. So you don't have to uh, worry much about, um, you know, scalability or, or performance issues there. Uh, so the, the best way to understand it is basically, you know, um, to have a look at it. So I'm going to do a quick demo for you. So this is the uh, test cube dashboard that you can um, uh, experiment. 
So uh, you can just go here, like if you have GitHub or GitLab, you can just lo log in uh, using your credentials. Um, so I'm going to continue. So here I already have a, um, one organization prepared for us. So as soon as you log in, you have an organization prepared uh, and you have like an environment uh, that um, you can deploy. So you can deploy this to your cluster uh, using an L command um, or, or RCLI. And then you have like, you know, a, a pod running on your cluster that is going to run all the tests for you. Uh, here I already went ahead and deployed these on one of our clusters. So, so now I have this environment. So I have this UI connected to um, to an agent running uh, on your cluster. So we just uh, can, can come here and add a test. So here I'm just going to create a simple uh, KSX test, uh, KSX ABC, D, and then a selected pipe. So uh, here, uh, TestCube already provides support out of the box for many different kinds of um, executors, like uh, different test types. I'm um, just going to select T6, and then I'm going to select uh, where's the my test file. So you, you can select TestCube uh, to go uh, into your uh, Git repo and then fetch the file from there. You can upload a file, uh, or you can even paste a string, uh, like a really a, a JavaScript code. So in this case of, of Key6, because it's a scripting language, I'm just going to, um, for the demo sake, I'm just going to paste the test. So I just wrote, wrote some JavaScript code that uh, tests an endpoint, uh, and uh, it fails after the time. So just just a simple thing uh, that I can create. So I just created the test. And now let's go ahead uh, and run it. So as you see here, um, now TestCube just scheduled a, a Kubernetes plot. Um, and uh, now the Kubernetes schedule is, is probably putting the pod uh, in one of the nodes and then running it. So uh, here you get the, the logs in real time uh, of everything that happened. Um, so you get the logs directly from the testing tool and then you can click see what's happening there. Uh, you can run it multiple times. So you get the, uh, all the insights about the pass fail ratios, the execution duration, um, and how long, you know, if your test is passing or failing. So you can run as, you know, a lot of them, uh, all of them, you know, at the same time. And TestKeep just makes sure that everything runs seamlessly uh, and gets the results for you. Uh, you can run this from your um, CICD system. So if you want to trigger the test, uh, we have integrations with uh, any uh, CICD system. And from there, you basically connect to TestCube and can run, you know, you can run this from your computer, you can run this from, um, uh, CICD system as well, and you just trigger the test and, and do everything. Um, as you see here, uh, all the tests are defined as a um, uh, CRD. So, so if you copy this uh, and deploy it to a cluster, um, it's, it will show up here. And we deeply encourage all the uh, people to store the tests in their uh, Git repos and apply them. So you can provision uh, or deprovision Kubernetes clusters at will, and you can just deploy the test, and you have your all the test setup always prepared to run things. Um, another example is like um, so. This is like how do you um, execute tests, right? So here I'm going to give you an example of uh, how to um, run a test suite. So my test suite uh, A B C D, and then when you have more complex workflows. You might want to have like different tests, like one after the other. Let's say you want to run multiple um, tests in parallel. Uh, this one is like just to parallelize load testing, and then you can have like one on test after the other. So can this can be any type of test? Can be you know API test, UI test, etc. So here I'm just gonna add a few. Uh, I'm gonna add uh, like a few more steps here, and then. Uh, I'm gonna press save. So so now uh, we can just come here and you can run the this test suite for us. And now everything is running like being orchestrated by by test cube. So you can see that these three tests are running in parallel. Um, then you know when these three finish, we are going to run these two ones, uh, and then we are going to run this one. Uh, and then of course you can click on on any of the tests and you, you jump right into it and you see like. You know the all the tests uh, insights like what, what happened here, um, and yeah, you just see all of the executions, the time gives you a really good overview uh, of, of of what what is happening basically on your cluster. 
Uh, and for any test type that uh, you don't see supported here, you can just go to our docs and create um, a container executor. So what you have to do is just create a Docker image with your testing tool, add it to test tube, uh, and it will work for you. Um, so, so yeah, so that's like the, the quick introduction to test tube. Uh, we have like a lot more features here that you can use, uh, even like one recent one that we released where you have AI inside. So uh, we allow people to um, to see like what's happening there. So for example, you can just click here instead of going to the logs um, and basically tells you that, you know, the code, the status code is not returning 200 and gives you uh, suggestions on what to do. Uh, and we have like many more features for integrations, like webhooks, like status reporting and all that. So um so yeah um it's pretty much a, a tool that is uh easy to use for any any testers the devops people that really wants to test uh, in kubernetes and wants to speed up their, their development workflow uh so yeah like give us a try go to uh, testq.io uh, if you have any questions about you know test cube and how to use it uh, go to our discord channel we pretty much uh, we are there all the time answering questions. Uh, or if you want, just you know, send me an email or book a call with me, and I'll be pretty happy to answer your calls.